Hey, this is Randy, and this is Gem of the Week, and the stone that I'm featuring today is Magnesite. Now, over the many years of watching people open jewelry jars and, and such, um, I have found that there is a dilemma in being able to tell real turquoise from imitation. Uh, actually, magnesite is one of the main stones that is used uh, to replicate or imitate turquoise. And I've got like this little container, but then I've got a huge tub of various beads. And as we're going to see, because magnesite accepts dye so well, it can be colored, depending on the time taken, to really look very much like turquoise. Now, often people say, always say it's howlite, and that's not true. Howlite and magnesite are different things. Magnesite is a magnesium carbonate mix it is a refractory material and actually it's used in the making of synthetic rubber. Now, magnesite itself has a duller finish, sort of like in this little bead. You see this one is kind of dull, sort of like chalk. It has a dull chalky, but that's because these beads haven't been treated with a finish. Uh, Howlite naturally has a shinier exterior and all, though this is shinier, it's still magnesite, but it has been treated so that it has that shinier finish. Um, they both apparently fluoresce under UV lights, and I'm not set up to, to, to demonstrate that, but they, dem they, they fluoresce differently. Now, magnesite has often been called buffalo or white turquoise. There is a true white turquoise, um, but that's not really what magnesite is. Now, magnesite brings a calming effect to the emotions. It promotes tolerance for emotional stress. Uh, it is excellent for people who have who are, you know, are nervous or fearful because it helps overcome irritability and intolerance. So let's look at some of the, the different ways that it, it is offered. And I'll, I'll drag out the presidium and we'll see where it falls. So just as you look, you're hopefully seeing many color differentiations. For example, these little beads sure do look like turquoise beads. Now, the other thing of the way you can tell magnesite from howlite is magnesite will have the brown veining. Uh, it's very distinctive. Uh, howlite actually has the black, and I don't have much howlite, but I'll try to do a video somewhere down the line comparing the two. But you see these are very, you know, you put this in a necklace, and really, it's going to be difficult to tell those from the real thing. Then you've got this piece, you see, the veining. Now this one has been dyed to make it a darker color. Magnesite actually, like howlite, is white uh, in its natural form. Okay, here are some chips. Again, these are very similar to turquoise. Look at how they've got the little uh, the, the the matrix or the veining. Now a little tidbit of information I learned, and I will do a video on actual turquoise later down the line, is that turquoise itself may not actually have black matrix. They use shoe polish to help create that effect. Then here are some small beads. 
See, they look like, they look like a good quality turquoise. You can see the little veining in them. These nuggets are very convincing. Look at these. And then these have been given more of that brown. Often uh, the thing with uh, magnesite is the dye is constant. In other words, it's consistent. It's one color. Uh, for example, these. Now these have been dyed a turquoise color and a coral. Now you see how bright that dye is. There's no variation. I mean, it's just one solid color. So that's going to be your hint. Usually real turquoise has variations. It's not a boom, a solid color, unless it's a very, very high grade turquoise, kind of like, uh, um, you know, grade A Sleeping Beauty. Another really nice bunch of beads are these. Aren't these luscious? You would be hard pressed to not think these are real turquoise. I think one of the differences is that when it gets this color, this this funny, this is a very natural color for turquoise. When it starts to get into this really funny not even greenish, but this really dark color. That's when it to me it's it's obvious, like these. These to me are obviously dyed and not turquoise. I would be very suspicious of turquoise this color, or, or something this color being called turquoise. These are composite pieces. They have taken and made it. Doesn't it look like Mojave? Uh, but they've taken composite dyed pieces and put it together. And then look at these. I just dropped one. Doesn't that look like Laramar? Can you see that? That could be mistaken for Laramar. It's even got the little cloud shadows in it. Okay, now there's some other, I brought, I've got some other bags. And look at these. So they've dyed it green. This actually has a mix. Look at this one. That looks natural, doesn't it? Even has that little inclusion. This one, a big white one. You see the brown, okay? Then, let me pull out another one. And pull. here's some more white. Let me get this open. This poor material has been packed away and hasn't seen the light of day. Now look at these. This has all been sold as as magnesite. And see how interesting the, the dye is, the coloration. They're beautiful stones. They're going to be beautiful in pieces of jewelry. The important thing is that you know what's what and you honestly disclose what the material is. I, you know, and, and even if you don't know whether it's magnesite or whether it's howlite, all you simply have to do is just simply inform people that it is not real turquoise. Let me pull this one open. Here's more. And in this pack, look at the variation with it. 
So here's a piece that's really taken the die well. This one less. These look like real turquoise chips in color. But again, when I look at it and I see that the veining is very flat looking. Do you, do you notice that? It and, and it's less of it. Real turquoise doesn't have this. It's hard to explain. You've just got to have seen enough real turquoise to be able to tell the difference. Generally, when when people are showing jewelry, I can I can through the camera I can tell at a glance whether it's magnesite or halite, or whether it's possibly real turquoise. Again, all beautiful beads, uh, but it's all magnesite. Okay, now let's go ahead and test some. Oh, I wanted to show you these two. These were sold as a, as a batch, and they were selling magnesite, little magnesite beads along with freshwater pearls. See, it looks like turquoise and pearls, doesn't it? Okay, so let's pull our presidium in, and I hope you can see that well enough. And let's see where these things fall on the, on the scale. So let's pull up a piece like this and see where it goes. So that doesn't go up very high. It's it's not moving, but it's moving. But let's pull this one out. And that goes up slowly. Let's see if we can find consistent readings. Now see, I tested some of these earlier and they jumped more, so they warmed up a little. Let's try this little blue one. That one jumps. Now it goes up to the very end of quartz, heading toward jadeite. Now we know jadeite isn't going to be this color. Let's try this one. It gives us a high reading toward the end of the quartz. Now see here they've got this beautiful little finish on it. And it doesn't go up near as, as far. So using Presidium may not help you. Because we cannot get consistent readings. We know it's a real stone. But we're not going to get a consistent reading that helps us identify. You just have to know magnesite by sight. There. So more often it goes up into the quartz line. That seems to be where it's going consistency. One of the best sources that I know for helping identify magnesite is the Fire Mountain Gem catalog or even website. You can simply go on their website and just type in magnesite. It will bring you up all the products that are offered in magnesite and that will really help you identify. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, and interesting and uh, thank you for watching Magnesite the gem of the week and look forward to seeing you in the chats